Actually, not very many people know this, but a super, super low protein diet will actually give you a, a whole new level of leanness just because the cost of weight gain goes up exponentially as protein goes down. So if you can get your protein intake down below maybe 5% a day, you're very, very lean because your body can't afford to build any kind of mass at all. Uh, unfortunately, and this is how like the 30 bananas a day diet work, your fruititarian diet, it might be 5% protein, your potato hack is very low in protein. You're going to actually lose weight and get thinner, but a lot of what you're losing is lean mass. And so you're literally going to have lighter organs, your brain's going to be lighter, your bone, uh, of course, and bone and muscle is going to be way mm. lighter. So there's this like extreme low protein approach that you typically see in the vegan world, like the McDougal starch solution. And this is, you know, extremely high carb, but it's very low fat and it's very low protein. And it works, quote unquote, for just weight loss. But yeah. I don't know if you really want the osteopenia and the sarcopenia that is definitely going to come along with that. Yeah, perfect example of how weight, what the scale says and weight loss is not necessarily the same as health. Right. And interestingly, you know, there are some prominent vegans who have said, yeah, you can lose weight with heroin and cocaine, and but I'm not going to recommend that to my patients. And they do that. They say that in reference to low carb diets, but it seems like they should probably be saying that in reference to this very low protein diet. Exactly, Amanda. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I totally agree. Yeah, very interesting. And then, of course, the nutrients that come along with the different sources of protein. Um, you know, higher nutrient availability in the animal proteins compared to the plant proteins. Um, again, not that you can't get them, but things like vitamin D and B12 and even um, heme iron and zinc and, of course, DHA. I mean, all of those are really fairly deficient in, in plant proteins, aren't they? Absolutely. And the reality is um, you need, you know, uh, at least 25 elements and minerals to run your body and be healthy. And plants are absorbing these minerals from the soil, but they're limited as to how far their roots can reach. So they'll absorb a certain amount of minerals. But animals go around and eat a bunch of different plants and they bioaccumulate minerals. They bioaccumulate and biomagnify nitrogen and minerals. So as you go up the food chain, as you go up the trophic levels from plants to herbivores to carnivores, you see higher and higher bioaccumulation and concentration of micronutrients like minerals and nitrogen and protein. And the reality is the higher you go up the food chain, the higher the nutrient density of the food you're eating. It's just a scientific fact. That's why animal foods are always higher in protein and micronutrient density than plant foods, period. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense.